in the history of human, human, of human generations than today. And the reason is manifold. Uh, it is connected <coughs> with those technologies which we introduced in the last decades. Economists usually say that uh, the strength of a, a, a economy is based on its resources, on labor, on, ma on material, on energy, on capital, and on knowledge. And from these five, knowledge is getting the most important resource. And within it, scientific knowledge as well. Uh, of course, uh, to get to this point, uh, we have to introduce new, new, new and uh, newer approaches. Uh, since get, things getting complicated, therefore, uh, uh, we have to put together our efforts doing multidisciplinary uh, activities, doing it in groups and not alone. And we have to find new priorities. You may uh, remember that a few decades ago, each country was very carefully guarding its science, and the reason was that it was the source of national security. After the political changes in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, it has been less important. It became more important to create jobs and to be competitive, and this, of course, changed the priorities also. And one more thing. Uh, uh, technologies are developing, and after that, they are dying out. One of the most important technology group is now semiconductors. Uh, in anything what we are using, transistors, chips are used. Uh, and uh, we already know, of course, the limits. And if, we, if a technology dies out in order to be developed further, we need new technologies. These new technologies have to be based on new ideas. And these new ideas, again, are coming mainly from uh, research. There is another trend. It is partly connected with saving materials, partly with other things. So things are getting miniaturized. Miniaturized means more and smaller scales. And this introduces again new technologies. And the key technologies in my understanding of the future are coming from this field. And they are mainly around nanotechnologies. Nanotechnologies will be the key technologies in a few decades on any field. What the economy is driving. Uh, biote biotechnologies, information technologies, and materials, of course. But in addition to that, the quantum world is getting to become real. Uh, as, and then, since things are complicated, therefore the critical size about which pace of to deal with this problem to, to hope success is getting higher and higher, and therefore cooperation is a must. Even the biggest countries are nowadays already not big enough to realize all the ideas which are on the table. And in addition to that, one more thing. We, I call it time paradox. Uh, we need more and more knowledge to get along in life. But, and of course, this needs more time to acquire it. But at the same time, this knowledge gets obsolete faster and faster. And therefore, time is one of the most important factors in our life. And uh, of course, this means that there are continuous changes. Now I go back to Heraclitus. Already Heraclitus said, Ch change is the only reality. Nothing exists and nothing existed. Everything happens. So let us see what is going to happen in the future. I, uh, on these changes, I illustrate here a few examples. Color, which is the most frequent one. I am colorblind, so I don't see properly red, so I have a green pointer. So here is the transistor of 50 years ago. This is a new chip, what IBM created. It is called True North. It imitates the brain. So they uh, imitated 1 million neurons and 256 million synapses. These are the connection between neurons. And this chip uses 10,000 times less energy than the, the classical chip 
with the same power. Uh, the other one, 50 years ago, IBM 1790 was the top computer. Now we are building quantum computers. Hopefully very soon they are going to life. Uh, 50 years ago, the laser looked like that. And Towns, one of the inventors of the laser said, a solution needs problems. Now the problems are there. One of them is laser fusion and energy production uh, thing. 192 lasers with enormous energy try to explode a mini hydrogen bomb in order to create energy. Uh, that time, energy was produced this way. Now the trend is this one. When I started my career in the uh, late 50s, uh, we were dealing, and I did condensed matter physics, we were dealing with three dimensional systems. Now we go to two dimension, one dimension, and zero dimensions, and this is, goes together with miniaturization, producing newer and newer technical, pos technical possibilities. That time, uh, we communicated by mail. Now, we have the Internet of Things already. Even things are already combined via Internet. Uh, that time, we knew already the DNS, DNA uh, molecule, but now we are mastering it. At that time, it was the first uh, TV, interactive TV. Nowadays, in artificial inter intelligence, everything is connected. Just a few examples of what happened in 50 years. And this is accelerating. We, uh, we are not allowed to forget about it. What are the driving forces of this uh, development? First, first of its global competition. Competition is an added value and, a, and an improvement of quality and everything produced. Cooperation and networking. It is connected with the need for a critical mass, overtaking a critical mass, and to avoid parallel activities. Support of excellence. When we started the European Research Council, that was our slogan. Only one selection rule, excellence. If there, are, there is, in politics mainly, always a trend to equal the, this, this, uh, the poorer and richer regions. If you want to develop fast, no, no, this is the solution. The solution is to have the best in order to uh, develop fast. I illustrate it with a rubber sheet. A rubber sheet is an active activity of any field. Uh, the excellence is a, a pencil which pushes the sheet up. These are the singularities. But at the same time, the surrounding gets also higher. I think this is the good philosophy. A good infrastructure. Without infrastructure, nothing works. So to invest in infrastructure is a must. Uh, there is another paradigm which helps this accelerating development. In the last century, when we wanted to produce something new, then we made experiments to test it. Nowadays, we can compute it. Simulation takes over part of the experimental work. I am an experimental physicist. We are going to have just enough job in spite of that. But this statement is uh, true for robotics and for everything. I mentioned to you already these technologies. That means nanotechnology, uh, biotechnology, information technologies, quantum technologies, and materials. The quantum world is a very, very exciting thing. I would be happy to speak about it even more so because uh, I think the first Hungarian who turned the attention of the scientific community in social sciences and humanities to the quantum world was <coughs> the, the name giver of this conference. Uh, now, uh, the other thing is what I want to mention. Uh, whenever we develop and make new things, it is always combined with risks. Benefits and risks are coming together. The, but there is no uh, benefit without risk. And uh, therefore, in order to give you a healthy development, we have to balance these two. So re rewards and risks have to be balanced. Uh, this is a mastering thing, and this is complicated. Uh, 
Uh, to risk, we have to respond. I don't want to go into the details. I just want to mention that to respond to risk are many activities in practically all elements of human life. Now, uh, risks are, of course, always there. And we have to minimize the risk that we have to, have to manage them. But risk is part of a larger activity, what we call adaptability, or if you like, it is resilience, which is one of the topics of this conference. But all these are included even in a bigger field, which we call sustainability. And now I want to share with you a few ideas on that. Uh, sust uh, sustainability is always complicated. I mentioned in the introduction the Paris decision where I think they have forgotten to include all elements in their analysis. What are these elements? Well, uh, of course, uh, when we speak about sustainability, then the economy thinks to produce more, 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 more products, better, better and better ones. So economy. Of course, but this is connected with the environment. It, I don't want to go into the details, but if you produce energy, if you use materials, you always produce waste and you use up your, our natural resources. So the environment is the other element. And of course, the third one is how we are doing it, how it influences our life. So the social aspect is also. And the, the real solution is where these three things overlap. And to find this region and to properly define it is not a, si a, a simple thing. Let me tell just one thing, which is a little bit hanging out of it, but still I want to tell it to you. Uh, even Ferenc mentioned democracy. If you look around in the world, then you may see that democracy is defined practically by each individual according to his own interests. There are so many definitions. I am a physicist. I am accustomed that whenever we start something, we have to precisely decide it. Otherwise, you may do whatever you like. So uh, for me, the most brutal def definition of democracy is that you or I may do whatever I wish to until it doesn't uh, hurt the, the intention of the other person. Now, I don't speak about the society, but about individuals. Now, what does it mean? That democracy is the system where the harmonization of this interest is more important than anywhere else. Uh, let me tell just, whenever I had a discussion with other people, my, my philosophy has always been that if the, there was a disagreement, not to say that the other one is stupid, but to learn why his opinion is different from mine. And maybe the discussion brings to an equilibrium. And I think a conference like this one has just this duty. Now, speaking about sustainability, I brought here this graph, which is, I think, very, very clearly what is the main problem. Uh, this shows... Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it shows that uh, how many earth is needed for the quality of life what is present now in that country. So in the United States, they, they use the, the, the energy, the resources of 5.3 words in, in one year. Uh, the lowest one, Malawi, uses 0.3. Now, uh, uh, Bra Brazil is about at the average. Wherever, that means Europe is all here. Now, this, is, this shows clearly this cannot be kept for the future. So, this is 5.3, 3.1, 3.2.5, 2.4. 3, These are European countries. Brazil, Mauritius, China, India, and Malawi. So, if... Seven billion people are living uh, uh, with different lifestyles, then this is, this is the map. Now, about sustainability. I mentioned these three pillars. Now, uh, I try to rank them. Uh, 
The most important, but the smallest one, is the ecological sphere. The next one is the socio-political sphere. And the third one is the economical sphere. I don't know whether it is healthy or not, but that is the general tendency now. What is what is means building balance? To integrate these three fields. That means integration of these three pillars. And then uh, involve everybody that we call it in science multidisciplinary. Uh, we know that there are a lot of uncertainties. So safety switches have to be uh, 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 switched into this system. And we never have to think locally, uh, we have to think globally, acting locally and, uh, and thinking uh, globally. Now, what is the result of our life, what we are doing now? Poisons of food, water, air, and soil. Increasing energy consumption in transport, manufacturing, heating, and cooling. Wasting non-renewable energy resources, oil, metals, and so on. Overuse of water in industry, agriculture, and at home. Uh, overuse land for economical activity and human lifestyle. Uh, let me tell just two examples. We are very happy when new and new industrial parks are born, where air are built, on land which could be useful for food production. Uh, uh, could, I could man, uh, tell many such similar examples. Uh, uh, the activities to increase the flood levels. You may know that there are many Dutch farmers who are buying land in Hungary. I used to my Dutch friend, I tell my Dutch friends that uh, they are coming here because they are afraid of the rising sea level. Of course, they were very strongly protesting against this idea, but I think it is still true. I try to uh, summarize those challenges which are, we are facing in the next 50, 40 years. Uh, and these are energy and raw materials, water, food, environment preservation, poverty, terrorism and wars, health problems, education, democracy, population increase, migration and demography, information and its security, competitive, uh, competitiveness and employment, security of people and transport. Maybe there could be other ones, but this is just enough. Each of them could require a lecture to explain what is behind it. And there could be many others added, but I just wanted to illustrate that we have many problems what we are facing in the next few decades. Now, of course, now I want to speak about our hopes. Uh, in the te technological development, each bis big discovery changed completely society. When Newton invented the, the, uh, the, the mechanical world, new uh, re regulations, the Newton rules, this resulted into the first industrial revolution, the steam engine and many other things which changed human life, transport, uh, production, and even much more. The second one was electromagnetic radiation, radio, uh, electromagnetic waves, which enlightened, uh, uh, we, we, we made light in the world. Uh, uh, that led to the electronic resolution, to the radio, and so on. By the way, let me tell that uh, there was a German couple with a, sm a small boy, and they went to a famous German professor, uh, telling that seemingly this boy is, is talented in sciences and in music. What is his proposal? He was a physics professor. Where should they send their son? The professor said, in science we did already everything, send your son into music. Seemingly, the, the guy was, this guy was more clever. Uh, his name was Hertz. He discovered electromagnetic radiations. Uh, the third such uh, invention was the nuclear forces. This led us to the nuclear age, to the E equal M cell square, the famous Einstein equation, which shows that material can be transformed into energy and reversed. 
it, it, it helped us to understand our universe and uh, uh, gave us energy resources. Uh, we, it helped us uh, uh, to understand the human body, the DNA was found, and so on. But at the same time, uh, we, uh, parallel, the quantum mechanics was invented, again changing completely our world. Now, quantum mechanics, uh, we, we learned and understood, uh, not understood, we learned uh, its rules in the previous century, and we could use lasers, transistors, and so on. But this century is important because we learned how to manipulate the quantum mechanical rules. And this is a significant change leading to quantum computers, secret communication, very sensitive sensors. Let me tell you, uh, there are already sensors with which we can detect one single molecule. And if, for example, we want to detect cancer as early as possible, this is just one example of how this is possible. There is one problem, and I think at this, this type of conference it has to be mentioned, and this is that while the technological development is, is exponential, with some jumps in it, the human way of thinking is linear. Let me explain what I think by that. Uh, two examples. One, when uh, the computers were invented, uh, and we had big memories, I myself saw that we need, don't need paper. Everything will be stored in memories of computers and in the sky. We have never been using so much paper as today. Another thing is, uh, the uh, communication developed that we have video conferences. One would think that we need less traveling. We have not, we never traveling as much as today. Or, uh, there are many uh, possibilities for for uh, learning internet. The significance of universities has never been as important as today. Skyscrapers, uh, information technologies uh, help us that we can work together with many people while they are not together in one building. We are still building skyscrapers. Why? Because it's a symbol of power. So the uh, and forecasts. People like forecasts. I like this, I showed it many times, maybe even here, but I always show this because this very clearly shows the strange way of human thinking. Uh, this is uh, a, a set of forecasts in connection with computers. The first one was uh, uh, Thomas Watson. He was one of the founders of the famous IBM company. And he said in 1943 that the world market may need five computers. The second such forecast, what I have found in an American journal, uh, Popular Mechanics by, by name, uh, forecasted in 1949 that the future computers will, the weight of the future computers will be less than 1.5 tons. Of course, it came to reality. I have here much more than that. Uh, the third one was uh, Ken Olsen, the, uh, one of the owners of Digital, Deck, Digital Equipment Corporation. He said, no one should ha uh, wish to have a computer at home. And finally, Bill Gates said in 81, uh, 1981, that 640 kilobyte memory should be enough for everybody. If a company did something to increase this need with many orders of magnitude, this was just Microsoft. Now, as, as far as technologies are uh, concerned, I mentioned already uh, the, uh, the the, this, uh, these four important stages. Uh, I just want to uh, add here one more thing, maybe two. Uh, uh, the uh, first one is so important that or I mentioned it already, I want to say it once more. Technologies are only chances. And how we use it is important. And how we use it is very strongly connected with social backgrounds. And I think in a conference like this, this has to be maybe one of the key messages. The other one is, uh, again, connected with human uh, nature. Uh, brutally, I say that we have in our hands 
results of 21st century technologies. And we try to drive these technologies with 19th century attitude. Again, uh, this, uh, this bridge has to be built very strongly, widen it, maybe even uh, make, make, make it cost free, so to say, in order that this gap should be overcome. What are the technological uh, 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 challenges in the future? I mentioned already that the tra te tradition technologies are dying out and we have to find new ones in order to replace them. Uh, uh, research is getting more important. Now, if one looks around uh, in parliaments of different countries and so on, and seemingly this has, which has not been raised to the needed level yet. Uh, I mentioned already the time parameter. Uh, the uh, research results are getting faster and faster, faster out of date. You know, and, and therefore, their application as fast as possible is again a must. What type of technologies we need? Of course, we need technologies which decrease the risks, which are economical, which, which are efficient, and which use less raw materials. Uh, I gave here, the, I put here this slide, which shows that there has to be a harmony between technology and nature. This is a sunflower and this is a turbine engine. A life cycle approach. When the nylon stockings for ladies were uh, invented, then they lasted for a life. Very soon, industry realized that they have to decrease the quality in order to get new and new customers. This happened. This cannot be kept for the future. So I think industry has to think about life cycle use of any material, any resources, what we have. Uh, integrate products uh, into the environment and in, the, in those social con conditions which exist. And the critical sizes also I mentioned already. I collected five paradoxical issues what, which we are facing with. The first one I called uh, knowledge paradox. The significant significance of science increases while the interest of the young generation decreases. I think this is something where we have to change. The second one is the time paradox that I mentioned already. The time to, is need to, to acquire knowledge is getting longer and longer, but at the same time, the obsolescence time of this, uh, this knowledge is uh, decreasing. So time is an important factor. And therefore, I wrote here that the future belongs to those who are learning. Those who learned only in the past belong to the world which does not exist anymore. The third such uh, paradoxical issue is uh, what I call innovation paradox. Good research, and this is a European specialty. In, in Europe, we have very high level research, but losing ground and competitiveness. If you look at the geographical maps, European competition, competitiveness compared to the world is decreasing. The center of gravity of economical development, uh, say 1,000 was around India or so, it shifted to the Atlantic until the 50s, and after the 50s it started to move in the other direction. It now, now it is at the border of China. Uh, I want to tell you something, maybe it's not true. My philosophy is that we are writing with Latin letters. Latin letters are connected with analytical skills. Uh, the Chinese letters writing is connected with, with synthesizing skills. Uh, analysis is taken over by computers, synthesis not. And I am sure that uh, artificial inter inter intelligence will never replace uh, uh, human creativity. It will be a very good, helpful, very good tool for us, but never replace our thing. And uh, finally, the fifth one, 
the share of governments in finance, financing research and development activities is decreasing. But this decreasing share is getting more and more important. I don't have time to go into the details of that. Uh, I think I, my time is over. Uh, I want to remind you on one of the great thinkers, Hungarian thinkers, Denis Gabor, Gabor Dénes, uh, the, no, the inventor of holography and uh, one of the founders of the Club of Rome. He said that a human race may die out of three reasons. One of them is a nuclear war. I think it's clear for us. The second one is overpopulation. Again, it's clear for us. Uh, we feel it, the effect of this already. But the third one is getting lazy. And I think this is the biggest danger. And if you look around in Europe, then you may agree with me. At the end, I want to quote the greatest scientist of the last century. Uh, and I want to quote two statements from him. The first one is the problems uh, we are facing today cannot be solved with the same way of thinking by which we created them. I think I mentioned this already in a similar uh, group, but not the other one. And I think this, this other statement of Einstein is equally important. Uh, he said that I am afraid of the day when technology gets ahead of human connections. It will result in a generation of idiots. I hope it is not going to happen. And a minor part of the, our duty is based on the discussions what I hope are going to take place today, tomorrow, and the after tomorrow. Thank you.